Um, hello everyone, I'm Fawad, and today I'm going to talk about how we can build quick and accurate 3D models using a drone-based LiDAR. This work was done in collaboration with folks from NEC and USC. 3D reconstruction refers to the process of building 3D models, which are 3D representations that have a one-to-one -one correspondence with objects in the physical world. The rawest format to represent a 3D model is a 3D point cloud, which consists of many points in which each point is defined by its 3D position along with other attributes like intensity and color. To build 3D models, a human operator flies a drone around a building and captures images and then feeds them to a photogrammetry software. This photogrammetry software infers the underlying positioning information and 3D structure from the 2D images. Because the photogrammetry software infers 3D structure from 2D images, it can be slow, and so it must run offline. It w involves a human who babysits the entire process, and if the human operator uh, doesn't design a good trajectory, it can lead to inaccurate reconstruction. To this end, our goal in this paper is to enable fast, automated, and uh, accurate 3D reconstruction. To elaborate more on our approach, suppose we want to reconstruct this building. Instead of inferring 3D from 2D, we mount a LiDAR on a drone to get 3D point clouds directly and instantly. If we position these point clouds using GPS, we get a fuzz, fuzzed and blurred 3D model, such as the one you see here. So instead, we use simultaneous localization and mapping, or SLAM, which uses 3D point clouds as input and outputs the accurate 3D pose of those point clouds in a single coordinate system. SLAM infers pose by aligning the point cloud. Suppose we want to align point clouds A and B. To do this, SLAM finds a transformation matrix T1 that transforms B to A's coordinate system. And this transformation matrix T1 minimizes some cost function, which in this case is the 3D distance between every point in B to its nearest neighboring point in A. The transformation matrix T1 is actually B's position in A and we iteratively match new point clouds to A and append them together. However, this is challenging for several reasons. The drone cannot run SLAM on board because they have limited compute resources. Secondly, drones have limited battery lives. And third, SLAM was never designed to run on a drone. On board a vehicle, for instance, an autonomous vehicle, SLAM algorithms can use the entire 3D point cloud for localization. However, in our case, because the drone is in the air, SLAM has access to only 9% of the entire point cloud. This makes positioning difficult because it is challenging to align sparse point clouds. To this end, we built AeroTrage, which given some area of interest, can reconstruct an, an object in that area with some user-defined level of detail. For this talk, I'm only going to focus on how we can ensure high positioning accuracy using SLAM with a novel trajectory optimization technique and in-flight feedback. We have found that SLAM's positioning accuracy depends on two things, point cloud overlap and density. Point cloud overlap between two point clouds is the amount of common area between them. In this case, the point clouds on the left have a smaller overlap as compared to those on the right. Through extensive experiments, we find that as overlap increases, positioning error decreases. This means higher overlap ensures better positioning. On board a drone, we can control overlap with LiDAR orientation. To get maximum returns, we position the LiDAR such that its lasers hit the ground at a perpendicular angle. In this setup, we can orient the drone in multiple different ways. In the perpendicular orientation, the LiDAR, uh, the, the LiDAR scan lines are perpendicular to the drone's direction of motion. In parallel, the same scan lines are parallel to the direction of motion. Our experiments show that a parallel orientation ensures high overlap and hence results in low positioning error. So, AeroTrash should fly the drone in a parallel orientation. Similarly, the drone speed also controls overlap. Flying slower ensures high overlap and hence reduces error, so we should fly the drone slowly. In rotational motion, the overlap between consecutive frames is relatively smaller. In an experiment as shown in this figure, SLAM is thrown off by a single rotation. So when possible, aerotrage should avoid rotations. Apart from overlap, 
point cloud density, the number of points per unit area in a point cloud also affects positioning accuracy. The point cloud on the top has a higher density as compared to the point cloud on the bottom. Our experiments show that it is easier to match point clouds with a higher density because there's a greater chance that we're going to find common features between the two point clouds. The height of the drone controls density. Aerotratch flies the drone close to the object that we want to reconstruct. This ensures high density and low positioning error. From this, we have some flight constraints to ensure high accuracy. Similarly, we have other constraints that ensure that we can um, capture the object at some given level of detail. In addition, we want to minimize trajectory length to save uh, the drone's battery life. To jointly optimize for all of these, we use an integer linear programming formulation and feed these constraints to it. The result is an optimized trajectory that ensures high positioning accuracy and low energy consumption. However, slow, uh, SLAM is known to be prone to drift errors. To deal with this, Aerotrad uses an in-flight trajectory feedback to detect and mitigate drift. I, I don't have the time to go into the details, but the core idea is to detect drift using onboard GPS signals and then mitigate them using a loop closure maneuver in which the drone flies back to the origin. We performed extensive evaluations, but for this talk, I'm only going to talk about Aerostride's ability to quickly and accurately reconstruct 3D models. Using uh, Aerostride and a photogrammetry software, Colmap, we reconstructed a relatively large building. In this table, accuracy describes how closely we can reconstruct the 3D model, and completeness describes how much of the 3D model we can capture. For both of these, a lower number is better, and zero is perfect. As you can see, Aerotrage can reconstruct the 3D model with centimeter level accuracy and completeness, which is better than Colmap. Secondly, Aerotrage uses cloud offload, and in cloud offload, it continuously streams 3D point clouds from the drone to a cloud service, and we are running 3D reconstruction at the cloud service. Because we're running 3D reconstruction at the cloud service and during flight, Aerotrage can actually finish the entire reconstruction of the 3D model whilst the drone is in flight, whereas for photogrammetry softwares like Colmap, it can take up to several hours. And that's all I have for you today. Uh, thank you all for listening, and I'm happy to take any questions. Okay, thank you for your wonderful presentation. So my question is that how you get the ground truth? Actually for the SLAM data set, they use lots of you know, multi-modality like the mirror, image, LiDAR, radar, laser, etc. But how, how do you guys get the ground truth? Yep, that's a very good question. It's very hard to get ground truth. Um, and for the, eval for the accuracy and completeness, we actually used um, a photorealistic simulator. You might have heard of AirSim. We used that to get the ground truth. So we actually evaluated our approach there. Otherwise, getting a 3D footprint of the entire building, is, is, it's not possible. Thank you. <laughs>